All right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to dial in this round part so you can get the spindle center line directly pointing at the dead center of this part. Now, when we do an operation like this, we have to start somewhere. My preferred method is to take a piece of uh, quarter inch pin stock or three eighths or whatever size that you have. Um, I always encourage my students to have a piece of material that's about four and a half inches long and um, keep it in your toolbox, make sure it's deburred because this is a great thing to have for doing these operations like this. So the first thing I can do is just lightly hold it in the drill chuck. Then I can position it to where it looks like it's close to the center of the part. Then I'm going to take a ruler and take some comparative measurements from side to side and front to back. And then I'm going to move the X and Y axis until I'm getting a near perfect reading with my ruler. The reason I'm going to do that is because my test indicator that I'm going to be sweeping around the outside of this part with, it has a resolution of 0 .0005. That's a half a thousandth per line. But in order to achieve that kind of accuracy, we have a very, very short range of motion. So if I were to first come down with my indicator and start to sweep around the part and I run out of my motion, then the indicator is no longer taking a reading and it can become confusing. So the closer you are to begin with, the better this is going to go for you. Now I know that this is two inch diameter stock and I know this is a quarter inch pin. So if I subtract a quarter from two inches, that's one and three quarters. If I divide that by two, then I know what my reading should be when I hold the ruler like this. Now just by eye, I can tell that I got it pretty close. So in the X axis, I'm actually already very happy with the position. And the Y axis is, is the same. And that's pretty common because your eye at a distance um, apart that's this size, you're going to find that you're going to center up with a pretty high degree of accuracy. Okay. And then remember, when you go to assemble your test indicator onto the universal holder, hold it upside down so that way the plunger is inside the body. Then we can slide our dovetail through the slot and then gently secure it. Now we can adjust our stylus angle. And I want it to be close to parallel with the surface or leading in by about 15 degrees. But I absolutely have to make sure that just the little contact ball is what's going to touch the outside of the part. Now I always like to start by sweeping the X axis in because, well, I have the best visibility of my, my indicator. So if I pull the indicator in here, and you'll see I make contact there. I go in about half a turn and then I kind of wiggle it back and forth until I get it um, close to my, my zero mark. I like to have about half of my range of motion engaged when I start to dial in an object. Now what we're going to see is I'm going to swing the indicator around the part and I'm going to watch which way my dial is moving. Now some indicators will have a different color on one side than the other uh, from the zero and that's to help you be able to pay attention and follow are you going positive or negative. So this is a dry erase pen marker and I'm putting a little green mark on the positive side of my indicator. So I'm pretty much at zero as I sweep around this part. I have went positive 
ten thousands. I got this mirror here. We'll see if this works with the camera. Now, as I continue to go, it's still moving positive, positive, positive. And I'm going to call that the, the stopping point. So I went 15 thousandths. That's to the, uh, the 15. So I went half of a movement plus an additional what looks to be 7 thousandths. Now I want to back out half of that because that was a positive move. So I know I need to bring the table or the indicator this way, which is actually the table that way. So I'll move to get rid of about half of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and re-zero the indicator. And now as I rotate around, it only went to positive about one and a half thousandths. And then when I get to this side and I stop, it's stopping at positive seven. Well, half of seven is three and a half, and that might be seven and a half. At this point, where I stop on my rotation is going to have a big impact on what my reading is. But we're going to call it seven. So I'll go ahead. And I'm thinking, I'll go ahead and re zero. So I'm zero there. Over here on this side, I'm minus one. On this front right here, I'm minus, that's two and a half thousandths. And then on the back side, I'm plus or positive my uh, same about two and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and move that to the zero by pulling the part away from the indicator. So that's zero. So I'm minus one and a half. So yep, zero minus one and a half. So I'll go ahead and move about half of that. So that's zero. Right here I'm at about plus a half. Over here I'm at about plus a half a thousandths. In the very back I'm at about plus a half a thousandths. Yeah. So pretty much that's going to be dialed in. Um, the, the roundness of the object that you're dialing in is going to determine how accurate it can be. Um, the rigidity of your setup is going to help minimize the uh, moves that don't really add up. So if something's loose and you, you're moving the table but your indicator is kind of moving because of the tension on the, the, the contact arm, then just be aware that that can be taking place. So this is when I'd reach up and I'd zero out the readout. Um, and then probably go into a bolt circle mode or whatever the next operation was.